from way back. The Great Gildersleeve. A special rebroadcast for all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations. Listen to another amazing episode in the life of the great Gildersleeve. Now let's see what the great Gildersleeve is up to. Those who know him will find it hard to believe, but at six o'clock in the morning, a good hour and a half before breakfast, he's up and out of the house. Dressed in a sweater, some old flannel pants, and a pair of bulging sneakers, he's out on the streets of Summerfield, jogging along at a dog trot with Leroy pacing him on his bicycle. I, I think we'd better turn back pretty soon, Leroy. Leroy! Come on, Unc, what's keeping you? Slow down. I thought you wanted some exercise. I do, but we don't have to be in such a hurry. We're not going anyplace, you know, just for the exercise. All right. How did I ever get into this? <laughs> How did he get into it? Well, for the answer to that, we'll have to go back to the evening before when Gildersleeve found an excuse to call on a certain friend and well-wisher, Miss Eve Goodwin. In dreams I kiss your hand, madame. Your dainty fingertips. Mm, good candy. And while in slumberland... Madam, I'm begging for your lips. I wonder whose picture that is. I have... Have a chocolate, Eve? No, thanks. No more for me. You know, I've been meaning to ask you, Eve, whose photograph is that? Photograph? On the piano here. The funny-looking goof. Who's that? The funny-looking goof is my brother, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Probably doesn't do him justice. Mm, it's a very good likeness. That's why I like to have it around. Oh, uh, well, he's intelligent. You can see that. I'm very fond of Fred, so I love the way he looks, even if he's not handsome. Uh, Eve, you never asked me, so I never... I mean, uh, how would you like to have a picture of me? I have a picture of you, Throckmorton, the one that was taken that day at the picnic. Oh, that uh, snapshot. How would you like to have a good one, a big one that you could keep on the piano beside the other one? I mean, if Fred didn't mind. <laughs> I'd love one, Throckmorton. Oh, I'll have one taken. And I hope you'll forgive me for what I said about your brother. I didn't mean anything. That's all right. He is funny looking, but he's nice. Well, it's the pot calling the kettle black. I'm kind of funny looking myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one can blame a man for the way he looks if it's not his fault. But speaking of the pot calling... Yeah, me... I know. I've been put on, putting on a little there lately. <laughs> Yes, but I'm going to do something about it. I think it's important that a man look his best, don't you? The best he can, I mean. Oh, yes, very important. Particularly if you're going to run for public office. Yeah, got to be in the pink. After all, people judge by what they see. I'm going to start reducing right now. That's a promise. <laughs> then I think we better close the candy box and put it away. Oh, yeah, that's right. Put it where I can't get at it. Uh -huh. uh, just a minute. Before you do, I'll just take a couple to keep me going. Rock more. I'll start my official reducing in the morning. <laughs> And so it is that we find Gildersleeve puffing and wheezing up South Elm Street. Leroy, you're going too fast. If I go any slower, I can't stay on the bicycle. Well, let's stop. Let's stop here a minute and rest. Hee <laughs> hee. No, just sit down here on the curb a minute. Get my breath. Okay. This is fun, hey, Unc? Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of fun. Let's do this every morning. Well, such a thing is too much exercise, Leroy. I think I've had it. I bet I've lost five pounds already. Oh, here comes the milkman. Yeah. He's a little late this morning. We're a little early. Well, let's get going, shall we? I suppose so. What's the matter? Uh, legs. They're tired. Uh, let's just rest here a little longer, Leroy. Oh, for corn's sake. Say, I wonder which way he goes from here. Who? The milkman. Why? Oh, nothing. Uh, just wonder. Hi, Mr. Farlow. Hello, folks. Anything wrong? Oh, no. We're just uh, sitting here. Well, you 
You've got a nice day for it. Yeah. Nice horse, isn't he, Uncle? Yes. Intelligent, too. Milk horses have to be, Leroy. He's a thoroughbred. Yeah? How can you tell? Oh, when you've been around horses all your life, you get so you can tell. Hello there, fella. Good old horse. Uh, hello, boy. Go ahead and pat him, Monk. He won't hurt you. Huh? Nice horsey. Nice horsey. Ooh, he likes me. You see, he's wagging his tail. <laughs> he's shooing flies. Oh. Nice horsey. Hey, cut it out. He won't hurt you, Unc. What's he nudging me for? He thinks you got a lump of sugar in your pocket. Well, tell him to cut it out, Leroy. Go away. Go away, horse. Stop. Hee hee. Tickles. <laughs> hey! Oh, he won't hurt you, Unc. Well, you don't have to slobber in my face. <laughs> I think I'll ask Mr. Farlow if he'll let me drive him. Leroy, get out from that wagon. Okay. And stay away from that horse. What for? I don't like the look he just gave me. He bared his gums at me. Oh, he was just picking his teeth. The oats get stuck between. Oh, well, never mind. Here comes Mr. Farlow. Speaking of horses, I'm hungry enough to eat one. Oh, Mr. Farlow. Yes? Uh, you wouldn't be going up Lakeside Avenue Way, would you? Oh, I sure am. Can I give you a ride? Unc, I thought you wanted exercise. You're not going to cheat and ride back without me. Well, all right. When you get to my house, Mr. Farlow, I wonder if you'd do something for me. Oh, I sure think. Just tell him that you saw me, will you? Come on, Leroy. Bye, George. Nothing like exercise. I feel better than I have in years. And I'll pass the buckwheat cakes, will you, Leroy? Here. Thanks. You know, children, every candidate for public office ought to get himself in good physical condition. He'll get more votes that way, and he'll do a better job if he's elected. It, uh, pass the syrup, will you, Marjorie? Here. Thank you. Yeah, everybody ought to take more exercise. Marjorie, what exercise do you get? What do I need an exercise for? I feel fine. You just think you feel fine. You ought to try it, my dear. Puts roses in your cheeks. Oh, Uncle darling, you sound so old-fashioned. What kind of exercise do you think I should take? Oh, um, run a few miles every day get legs like a wrestler? Huh? No, thank you. As a matter of fact, a little exercise be good for your figure. I read that on the woman's page just the other day. Oh, Bertie! Yes, Mr. Gillespie? I wonder if I could have a little more bacon just to finish up these cakes with. Yes, sir. About three slices? Oh, three or four, yes. And Bertie, you should get more exercise. Me, Mr. Gillespie? Yeah. Exercise? Uh-huh. Mr. Gillespie, if I took any more exercise, I'd drop dead. Exercise. Uh, maybe Bertie doesn't need it, but the rest of us certainly do. Say, Uncle, I've got a great idea. What is it, Leroy? As long as this is your day off, how about helping me and Piggy dig a new fort? Oh, I think not, my boy. Thank you just the same. Digging is wonderful exercise. <clears throat> but this is not a holiday for me, Leroy. I've got a lot to do today. Got to get started on my campaign. Got some on your chin, Uncle Mort. Huh? Yeah, no chin. <laughs> Here's your bacon, Mr. Gilfrey. Yeah, uh, looks wonderful, Bertie. Uh... You think I could have a few more buckwheat cakes now to finish up the bacon? <laughs> my, my. Yeah. <laughs> Might have another cup of coffee, too, just to slosh everything down, Bertie. <laughs> what campaigning are you going to do today, Uncle Mort? Campaigning? Uh -huh. Well, first things first, Marjorie. That's my principle. I'm going to have my picture taken. That seems like a funny way to start. What are you going to do with the picture? Oh, several things. <laughs> But a campaign portrait is something every candidate needs. Why? Oh, man's looks are very important. In politics, a man must take advantage of every asset. <laughs> There's nothing to laugh about, my dear. <laughs> Why am I taking all this exercise every morning? So I'll look trim and dynamic on a speaker's platform. Why am I having Mr. Hostetter come here and take my picture? So the voters will get the best possible impression of my face and my personality. Here's the case, Mr. Gillsleeve. Okay, thank you, Bertie. You say Mr. Hostetter's coming here, Uncle Mort? Yes. Is he going to take pictures of all of us? No, I'm the candidate, my dear. Oh, I thought maybe you were going to have some pictures of your family, like Mr. Dewey and Mr. Bricker and all those people have in the magazines. Dewey and Bricker don't have to pay Mr. Hostetter. He charges $5 a pose. Oh, Uncle, can't I be in just one picture with you? Well, I don't know what Oh, you... I can just see it in the magazine. Mr. Gildersleeve in the library of his home with his attractive niece, Marjorie. Well, it might be a good thing at that. Mr. Gildersleeve in the library of his home beating up his attractive nephew, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I like the caption, my boy, but I don't think you're the vote-getting type. It might uh, be all right, Uncle Mort. You could be reading to us. Yes, Leroy could sort of be in the background. Gosh, you'd think I was a freak or something. <laughs> that will do, Leroy. I want you to take a bath after lunch and put on your good suit. My good suit? Just to be in the background? With a collar and a tie. Well, i got to get started. Let's see. Barbershop for a trim, Hogan's for a new shirt. Oh, it's going to be a big day. Yeah, for everybody but me. If you take a little more exercise, Leroy, you wouldn't be so sensitive. Are you kidding? Who was out with you this morning? You were on a bicycle. Yes, sir, I feel like a million dollars. Before I get downtown, I think I'll just go upstairs and step on the scales and see how many pounds I took off. Aren't you being a little optimistic on the first day? After three miles of road work? <laughs> you try it. How could I gain four pounds? We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Right now, it's intermission and time for Kay Kaiser. Okay, Professor, let's dance. So for you and all you children listening, here comes our stop. Look at and listen to gal, gorgeous Georgia Carroll. Uh, all right, children, I'm sure you're thrilled to the words and melody of this beautiful number as gorgeous sings. My heart tells me this is just a fling. Yet you say our love means everything. Do you mean what you are saying? Or is this a little game you're playing? My heart tells me I will cry. Again, lips that kiss like yours could lie again. If I'm fool enough to see this through, will I be sorry if I do? Great Gildersleeve, who has dedicated his day to getting his picture taken. And even the greatest, there's a touch of vanity, and so we find him now dropping into Floyd Munson's barber shop for a once over before facing the camera. Well, come in, Commissioner. Uh, hello, Floyd. How you been, Mr. Gildersleeve? Just fine, Floyd. And you? Oh, can't complain. Climb right up in the chair there, Commissioner. How you been? Oh, I asked you that. <laughs> well, what'll it be today? Shave? I want the works, Floyd. Haircut? Shave, haircut, massage, everything. I want to look my best. Well, you must be going to a wedding or something. Oh, no, no wedding, Floyd. Uh, lady friend came to town, maybe? No, no lady friend. Somebody pass a remark? No. 
<laughs> Nothing like that. Well, you just looked in the mirror and couldn't stand it, huh? Yes. If you must know, Floyd, I'm having my picture taken. Oh? Well, everybody ought to have their picture taken once, I guess. I haven't had mine taken since I was last to an amusement park, and that's years. I'm in a little hurry, Floyd. Got an appointment with the photographer. Oh, sure. Yes, yeah, still have that picture around somewhere. Wife came across it the other day and got sore. She takes one look and she says, Who's the floozy you got your arm around? Didn't recognize it was her. <laughs> that's how long ago I had my picture taken. <laughs> Lloyd, if you don't mind, I have an appointment with a photographer at my house in exactly one hour. Well, why didn't you say so? I can get you out of here in jig time. Uh, All you have to do is say so. I'm no mind reader, you know. If you ever listen to anything, anybody... Well, hello, P.B. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Getting a little haircut? Well, that remains to be seen. If Floyd can stop talking... Will you uh, be long, Floyd? Well, it may be a little while. The commissioner here is getting his picture taken. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Gildersleeve. Got to make him look presentable. <laughs> yeah, he's got to look presentable, and that's going to take time. You want to wait? Well, I guess I'd better. Mrs. Peavy said if I didn't get my hair cut today, she wouldn't let me in the house. <laughs> well, make yourself comfortable. The magazine's there. New issue of Snoop came in today. I looked through it. Nothing much. There's one of Jinx Falkenberg. <laughs> Floyd, will you get on with a haircut, or have I got to go someplace else? Okay, okay, Commissioner. I can take a hint. Uh, how's your campaign for mayor coming, Mr. Gildersleeve? I haven't really started yet, P.B. What's holding up? The buttons. Buttons, Mr. Gildersleeve? You can't start a campaign without campaign buttons. I can't order the buttons till I have a photograph. Mm, that's true. That's why I'm anxious to have it a good one. This is really the opening gun for me, fellas. A good photograph is half the battle, you know. Helps a lot with the women's vote. Well, if you ask me, the women's vote don't mean a thing. They all vote the way their husbands do. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you mean to tell me, Peavy, that you and the wife don't talk over the candidates before election? Oh, yes, we do that. Well, Peavy, don't you and Mrs. Peavy usually see eye to eye? Yes, we do. She sees to that. <laughs> well, if you're in complete agreement before you go down to vote, Mr. Gildersleeve, once a man gets inside one of those booths, what happens then is between him and his conscience. It's P.B., I'm surprised at you. You mean you, you deliberately turn around? Well, I'll tell you. I'm a patient man, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I don't like arguments. But a man has got to stand up for his rights sometime. And I stand up for mine every four years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and you're right, P.B. Yeah. If you ask me, they never should have given women the vote. Why not? Gives them ideas. They were hard enough to live with before. They don't know what they're voting for anyway. Now, there I have to take exception with you, Floyd. Now hold still, Commissioner. I'm counting heavily on the women's vote in this campaign. That's what I say. They'll vote for anything. Listen. <laughs> Are you implying... Oh! Well, I told you to hold still. Now, look what you've done. I'm bleeding. Quick, do something. Now, don't get excited. It's a little cut happens all the time. Uh, put some court plaster on it. Yes. Yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> Confound it. Yeah, now, hold still. There. Yeah, that'll stop it. Yeah, and look at me. Look at me. Hacked to pieces. I come in here because I want to get my picture. Now, wait a minute, Commissioner. I'm not through with you yet. Well, I'm through with you, Floyd. You're nothing but a confounded butcher. Now, Commissioner, I think that's going a little far. Oh, uh, Margie? <laughs> How do I look? Oh, you're just... Uncle Mort, you look beautiful. Uh... I've never seen you in a stiff collar before. You never will again, either. <laughs> well, there's no reason you should suffer so. Here, let me loosen it a little. Uh, uh, don't touch it. Took me an hour to get into this. Oh, now, don't be silly. Just hold still. Uh, <laughs> isn't that better? Uh, I can breathe now, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. How do I look? Oh, uh, fine, my dear. I've always liked that dress. Uh, I'm so glad. I bought it at Hogan's this morning. Marjorie. <laughs> oh, Unky, why can't you just charge it to campaign expenses? Because nobody's paying for my campaign but me. No rich men are going to boss me when I'm the mayor. At least I haven't had any offers so far. Oh. But I needed a dress. I'll have to be seen in public occasionally, and a candidate's family ought to look decent. I don't care, Marjorie. I'm not made of money. Now, you mustn't get all excited before Mr. Hostetter gets here. You ought to be nice and serene for the photographer. Well, you're right. I wonder where the devil he is. Now, don't start worrying. I wish I hadn't left it a Judge Hooker to bring him here. Is Leroy ready? Leroy? He isn't even here. What? Where is he? I don't know. That darn kid. I asked him to do little enough for me. You'd think he'd remember this. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! All right, 
he can just go without having his picture taken. Oh, where's my globe? Globe? What globe? There's only one globe, Marjorie. Globe. Globe round, globe the earth, terra firma. The globe I got two years ago for Christmas. Oh, that. Oh, Bertie put it over here on the shelf. What on earth do you want it for? Well, I've been looking at some of the pictures of the other fellows in the magazines. Those fellows that claim they aren't running for president. And I notice they like to stand with their hands on a globe, like this. Well, what for? It looks silly. It'll show the voters I'm thinking about world affairs. These things are very complicated, my dear. Oh, the photographer. It's about time. Well, hello, Judge. Hildy. Uh, hello, Mr. Hostetter. How do you do? I was afraid you'd forgotten all about me. Just let the campaign manager do the worrying, Gildy. Mr. Hostetter, shake hands with the next mayor of Summerfield. I've already met Mr. Gildersleeve, Judge. Oh? Well, you photographed all the mayors in the last 20 years. What do you think of his chances? Mm, hard to say. First time I saw Terwilliger, I didn't think he'd ever make it. Well, ahead of Terwilliger. What was his name? Carson. Oh, yes, Carson. Didn't think he'd make it either. Well, ahead of Carson. Lawler? Lawler. I thought he was sure to lose. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, you might have a very good chance. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so, Mr. Hostetter. I wish you had a little better record, though. Uh, this is my niece, Marjorie. I thought we might get a few shots of me with my family. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Hostel? How do you do, young lady? And, and now, Mr. Gildersleeve, first the portrait, don't you think so? Oh, the portrait, yes. I think maybe something full length, standing here with my hand on the globe. Huh? Oh. What do you think? Oh, that's fine, yes. I'll set up my camera. Wait a minute, Gildy. You're dressed all wrong for this. What are you talking about? You look all dressed up. You want to look a little mussy, like you were busy. Well, this is a new suit, and I want it to look good. Go ahead and shoot, Mr. Hostel. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you want the full face, Mr. Gildersleeve? Full face? Oh, yes, whatever you think best. <laughs> uh, 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 could I see the profile, please? Yeah, uh, profile? Yes, just uh, look off toward your niece there. Oh, how's this? Uh, I'll try the other profile. Oh? Uh, uh, this way? Uh, how about a three quarters? Look off here. Like this? Uh, give me the full face again. <laughs> Make up your mind, Hostetter. All right, all right. Oh, that's fine. Now, if you can just hold absolutely still. Still? Oh, time exposure. Yes. Now, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hi, Uncle. Oh, what's going on? Quiet. Leroy, you spoiled the picture. What did I do? That was a time exposure. This is my nephew, Leroy, Mr. Hostetter. Oh. I don't know if you'd want him in the group. Leroy would be fine, Gildy. Typical American boy. I don't like to think so. <laughs> well, run upstairs and wash your face and change your clothes, young man. Oh, gosh, do I have to? Now, Gildy, you're making the same mistake again. Don't have Leroy looking like a dummy in Hogan's window. Let him look natural. Who'd vote for Leroy the way he looks now? Shh, filthy. Now, <laughs> get cleaned up and hurry. Okay, gosh, just because he wants to be the mayor. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hostetter, now the portrait. Uh, is this the way I was? Oh, uh, that's it. Now, uh, steady. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's it. Gee, long time to hold your breath. <laughs> now, how about one with Marjorie? Oh, very well. Uh, something on the sofa, perhaps? Mm-hmm, that'd be nice. Yeah, I guess that'll be all right. Uh, come on, my dear. Gildy, will you let me make one suggestion? What? One? Will you let me rumple your hair a little? No, I'll rumple my own hair. How's that? Terrible. You look as though you'd been in a fight and lost. Now, see here, oh, Hooker. Oh, wait a minute, Uncle Mord. There, how's that, Judge? Fine. Uh, Thank you, Marjorie. Is that suitable, Hostetter? Well, if that's the way you like it. Uh, now, young lady, if you look just a little more toward your uncle... Oh, my face is better looking the other way. Look where Hostetter tells you to, Marjorie. I'm running for mayor. Oh, well, is this all right? Smile. This is a happy, intimate home scene, for goodness sake. Oh, yeah. Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, if you could smile, too. Huh? If you could smile, too. Come on, nice big smile. Oh, yes, all right. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh-huh. Now, if you can just hold that. Uh-huh. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Thank you. <laughs> now, if we can get one with Leroy and Marjorie, that ought to be enough. Yes, where is that kid? Well, you told him to clean up. Perhaps he's taking a bath. Not, Not Leroy. Leroy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'll get him down here. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! What's the trouble up there? No pants! <laughs> All right, no picture. Yeah, that's enough pictures, I think, Mr. Hostetter. Uh, before you go, though, I wonder if I could have a word with you... Uh, Privately. Oh, certainly. What's this, Gildy? None of your business, you old goat. Well, if you're going my campaign manager... No, uh, you're mine. This has nothing to do with my campaign. 
Now, uh, Mr. Hostetter. Uh, yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, on the portrait, the first one, oh. I'd like one print made up kind of special. Kind of special? Yeah, I want a big print in one of those folders, you know. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, you might, well, touch it up a little here and there. Huh? Oh, I see. You mean around the chin? We needn't go into details. <laughs> You know your business. I'm sorry. I only meant... That's all right. Just make it look good. Could you have it for me tomorrow? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, What would you think of just a touch of color, Mr. Gildersleeve? Gives a very nice effect. Color? What does it cost? Oh, well, there's a small extra fee, but it gives a personal touch, if that's what you're after. (laughs) That's what I'm after. Uh, Go to it, Michelangelo. I'll pick it up tomorrow afternoon. I wasn't expecting you this evening. I came for a surprise. Well, you're always a nice surprise. I brought another one besides. Oh, now, Throckmorton, if you've brought more candy. Oh, no, Eve, no more of that. You uh, notice the difference in my waistline? Well... I guess it's too soon for it to show. (laughs) But I'm working on it, Eve. Uh, You remember I promised to bring you my picture? Oh, yes. Well, I've got it. What's the matter, Throckmorton? Well... Uh, Before I give it to you, Eve, I just want to say that this means something to me. I don't get a cabinet photograph taken every day, and I don't go around giving them to girls, either. Well, I'm glad you don't. I mean, I think it ought to mean something when a girl puts a man's photograph on her piano, don't you? Uh, Yes, it does. Well, uh, here it is. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Eve! I thought you'd like it. <laughs> but it's so funny. Well, if you think I'm funny. <laughs> oh, but I don't. That's just the point. I don't think it looks a bit like you. You don't? Oh, of course not. What have they done to you? All this retouching and these horrible colors. They're not you. I got the best photographer in town, Eve. He charges plenty. I just wanted to get something you'd like. Well, I already have a picture of you that I like. The little snapshot. I had it framed yesterday. You did? Where is it? Right over here. Oh, on the piano. (laughs) Now, this looks like you. But this other atrocity. Look at those pink cheeks. Yeah. (laughs) And those retouched eyebrows. Yeah. (laughs) Silliest thing I ever saw. Here, give me a pencil. I'll show you how to retouch. (gasps) Throckmorton. There. Whiskers. (laughs) Yeah. comes time for all you gals to really see and hear a handsome lad whose name is Harry Babbitt. Harry? Did I see moonlight and magnolia trees? Smile again, my darling, if you please. Did I hear music? On a warm spring breeze Speak again, my darling, if you please This rebroadcast is a presentation of the Armed Did Forces I Radio Service. September rain just then If you please touch my cheek With your hands again I can dream with ease, and I'm yours, my darling, if you please, yes, I'm yours, my darling.